Good morning everyone, Chris here with the new 2017 Hyundai Sonata plug-in hybrid. I wanted to give you guys some of my first impressions on this car and kind of just explain um, the hybrid and plug-in system just a little bit because at first it kind of was a little bit confusing for me when I first started driving the car. So right now, as you can see, it's winter time, it's really cold, and one of the problems with plug-in and electric vehicles is running a heater um, in electric mode. It's actually much more efficient and effective to basically just run an engine and use the heat from the coolant to heat your car and make you nice and toasty. So when you run the heater in this car after even though you have a full charge, you've plugged in the car all night, you've got 25 miles of 27 miles of electric range or however much this has um, and you turn the heater on your engine is still going to run in the background even though the car is going to be driven by electricity so right now we're in EV mode you can switch between EV uh, hybrid mode by just pressing this button down here and there's even a mode where you can use the engine to charge the battery which is kind of neat uh, it's called battery charge mode where you just press down the button and hold it uh, If you're cruising on the highway or something you can you can do that But of course, that's probably going to be at the expense of some fuel economy so we're just going to put it back into EV mode and uh, So th this this hybrid this plug-in hybrid doesn't exactly work like for example like the Chevy Volt um, when you plug it in and you don't have you know 25 miles of full electricity. The engine comes on for the heater, it comes on when you go full throttle, uh, and you really need to have some passing power. And uh, But it is fully usable in electric mode up to highway speeds and beyond. Uh, you, can, you can accelerate up to 70, 80 miles an hour in, in full EV mode without the engine coming on. That's no problem. This does have a conventional torque converting, uh, torque converter automatic, so it's not like a CVT, so you don't necessarily get that seamless uh, acceleration that you would in a lot of electric or hybrid vehicles. You do have, uh, you do have pauses for shifts, which is kind of interesting. It's a little bit of a different experience driving in electric mode with the transmission shifting, but it works, it's, it's just fine. So hopefully I've kind of ex explained how the hybrid plug-in EV mode stuff works with this. Uh, other notes on this car, after driving it for a few days, it's really comfortable. Uh, the seats are very nice, the ride quality is excellent, uh, it actually handles pretty well on these uh, Eco tires, and um, just the suspension is just really well set up for comfort. It's, but it's not too floaty and it still handles pretty decently. Um, it's just a very pleasant driving experience and it's, it's, it's also very quiet in here. So I'm gonna turn off the heater just so you can hear the car for a little bit in full EV mode. Instead of a tachometer, you've got um, kind of a percentage meter of how much power you're using. So I'm going to floor it here. You'll hear the gas engine kick on. It's a little bit icy this morning, so I'm not going to push it around these corners. You'll just have to kind of take my word that it handles well. You can also check out the video on Winding Road Magazine's channel. I just did a POV test drive with the vehicle there. This also has radar guided cruise control. Adjust 
your following distance, which is a very nice feature. It seems to work well. Uh, it's pretty seamless between lane changes, acceleration, deceleration. It's a nice system. As far as gas, uh, gas mileage, fuel economy, I've been getting about between 43 to 47 miles to the gallon in the, ma in the fashion that I've been driving the car. Um, one thing is it's really cold this week, so I've been running the heater pretty much constantly, which has the engine idling constantly. Uh, so I've been in full electric mode very little. I imagine if this were the summer and if I didn't need the heater, I didn't need any climate controls or if I just needed the AC, that I'd be getting even better gas mileage because I could utilize full electric mode for those 25 or 27 miles. Right now we've been driving around in eco mode, which the car automatically starts up in. Uh, one really nice thing about this vehicle is that it has a ton of uh, just a, a ton of fuel range. So just from the gas engine, you get, I think you get over 500 miles uh, from a tank. I've so far I've put 330 miles on this car this week, and we still have a, a range of 285 miles left, which is pretty cool. So you know you could you could buy this car, and depending on how much you drive, really not visit the gas station very much, which I think is, is kind of useful. It's certainly a change from uh, driving all my other cars, the BRZ, the Miata, the Volvo 50R, where you have to fuel up every 300 miles or so, sometimes less. Maybe a little bit of acceleration here in electric mode. So it seems like just when you get into the throttle, the gas engine comes on. And then when you're back to just cruising speed, it'll go, it'll switch back into EV mode. Brakes have good feel. Um, you can definitely feel it. It's a regenerative system, but really no, I don't have any complaints there. Economics are good. Um, it has a nice. I'll show you the the backup screen up here. We'll go into a parking spot. Nice turning radius. Steering feels good. You know, it's 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 not a sports car. This is kind of set up to be a more comfortable vehicle. So here we go. We're back into a space here. You've got the guidelines that turn with the wheel, so you can accurately place it. Screen's nice, high resolution. You can see individual salt grains on the pavement. And of course you have, you can always watch other videos for the full list of features on these cars, but you know, you've got a USB port, Apple CarPlay, auxiliary audio cables, a couple of um, 12 volt uh, plugs. And then uh, this system here is pretty nice. Touchscreen is responsive. You can kind of see uh, past fuel economy and energy information. You can see your expected charging time for the battery there. I've got an eco driving score of four, which isn't awesome. It's kind of average. And we've got a 43.3 uh, miles per gallon history. You know, and I'll, uh, 
I'll just show you a quick walk around while we're here. The exterior car is pretty dirty because we've had quite a bit of snow this week, but you'll get an idea for the design. One thing about this car is when the engine does come on, it's pretty quiet. It's almost uh, the transition between EV and uh, hybrid mode is pretty much seamless. You don't really notice it coming on too much. One disadvantage with the hybrid system is you lose quite a bit of trunk space because of the battery in here. Here's your plug outlet and, and all that good stuff. Decent amount of room in the back seat. Set to my driving position, I've got plenty of leg room. Decent amount of headspace back here. I actually haven't looked under the hood yet. Let's take a look here real quick. Cool. Well, hey guys, there's your uh, POV first impressions on the new Sonata plug-in hybrid. Uh, it's been a nice car to have this week during the auto show. I was shooting a lot of stuff for Motor One, and then we've got some uh, some things going up on the Winding Road channel with Chris Osberg. He was kind of doing a vlog style video. And I'm gonna turn the heat on because I am freezing. We'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next video. Take it easy.